a gracious good afternoon once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico, back at we with episode 20 of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. Today is April 17, 2020. Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., if you care to join us, I will be doing a live vlog via Facebook Live uh, as a commemoration for the 1906 earthquake and fire of San Francisco. This is nothing official, not affiliated with any organization or anything like that. This is something I'm doing completely on my own because I felt it was important to have some sort of commemoration that morning, even though we can't gather at Lattice Fountain as we do every year. So join us tomorrow morning. It is on the Facebook page, Emperor Norton's Fantastic San Francisco Time Machine. Well, let's launch into today's history. Start off with a couple of San Francisco items. 1906 on this day, Enrico Caruso had his triumphant West Coast premiere as Don Jose in the opera Carmen at the Grand Opera House before an audience of 3,000. The Opera House was located at 712 Mission Street between 3rd and 4th, now Jesse Square, which is the plaza in front of the Contemporary Jewish Museum just east of St. Patrick's Church. Uh, the church, if you've never been inside, has a lovely Kalimara marble, all green, really gorgeous, although that is not a pre-earthquake building. The building for the Contemporary Jewish Museum is, it is an 1851 Pacific Gas and Electric substation. If you've never been there, it's well worth a visit. Uh, maybe they'll do something about one of San Francisco's most famous Jewish residents someday. We're working on that. It was also in this day in 1853 that the U.S. Marine Hospital was organized at the Presidio. That's that old. In 1524, Giovanni Verrazzano, a Florentine navigator, discovered New York Bay. Of course, the Verrazzano Narrows Bridge, excuse me, is named in his honor. 1704, the first successful U.S. newspaper was published in Boston by John Campbell, the Boston News Letter. This date in 1912, the first unofficial gold record, Al Jolson's Ragging the Baby to Sleep. Who knew? It was on this date in 1924 that uh, Metro Pictures and Goldwyn Pictures uh, merged with the Louis B. Mayer Company to form Metro Goldwyn Mayer, MGM. Happy birthday, MGM, everybody. This date in 1961, the Bay of Pigs invasion, a doomed attempt to overthrow Fidel Castro by 1,400 Cuban exiles took place. The Ford Mustang was officially introduced at the New York World's Fair. You could have bought one in those days for $2,368, probably worth about 10 to 15 times more than that today. This date in 1970, Paul McCartney's first solo album, McCartney, is released. 2012, the 8th century St. Cuthbert Gospel, Europe's oldest intact book, is purchased by the British Library for nine million pounds. Birthdays today, financier, J.P. Morgan, 19, 1837, excuse me. 1896, the ventriloquist, Senor Wences. Who is in the box? I am in the box. Uh, we also had Thornton Wilder, the American playwright and writer, actor William Holden in 1918. Thornton Wilder, by the way, was 1897. Uh, 1923, Harry Reasoner, 60 Minutes, CBS newscaster. Film director Lindsay Anderson, 1923, 1937. Daffy Duck, he's 83 today. You're despicable. Let's see, we also have Pete Shelley of the Buzzcocks was born on this day in 1955 and Victoria Beckham, Posh Spice in the Spice Girls, 1974. Deaths on this day, 1790, Benjamin Franklin, the only president of the United States who was never president of the United States. Eddie Cochran, the uh, early rock and roller, died in a car crash on this day in 1960 at the age of 21. 1990, the death of Robert Ralph, excuse me, Ralph David Abernathy, U.S. civil rights leader. 
And Linda McCartney, 1998, at the age of 56, wife of Paul McCartney, of course. Kitty Carlisle, a.k.a. Kitty Carlisle Hart, uh, died on this day in 2007. 2016, Doris Roberts dies at the age of 90. Everybody loves Raymond. And in 2018, First Lady Barbara Bush. No one got yesterday's trivia question. We're very disappointed in all of you. Uh, the question is, what was Walter Cronkite's tagline at the end of every CBS Evening News? And that's the way it is, is the answer. Today's question, what does the JP and JP Morgan stand for? Post your answers in the comments below. We hope to see you all tomorrow morning. Until we see you again, be safe, stay healthy, stay inside, and be kind to each other. Good afternoon, one and all.